And as we look at Europe, there is increasingly concern, I think, about some form of uh, energy-related recession, whether it's the spike in prices because of the uh, um, uh, supply issue with energy or whether it's to do with a self-imposed ban on Russian energy supplies. Is there a real near-term risk that we have recession in Europe, perhaps led from Germany, where there's the greatest dependence on Russian supplies? Yeah, it depends very much on what the policy actions are going to be going forward. Uh, uh, there's not full clarity at this point how the policies are going to evolve. Given the current state of policies, we do expect that economic activity is going to slow down. Uh, but uh, again, we don't necessarily forecast a recession at this point. But having said that, there are many risks around that baseline. And uh, a further intensification of sanctions would certainly be something that could adversely impact uh, our baseline forecast. And can I ask you about risks emanating from um, financial markets themselves? Obviously, there's been some concern about liquidity in bond markets. We've also seen this remarkable story unfold around commodity speculation with nickel on the London Metals Exchange, suggesting that there is a lot of off-market trade activity that isn't well understood. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the levels of uh, non-financial sector uh, leverage and debt. Um, it, are any of these particular issues ones that you fear could be more serious going forward? Well, in March 2020, we saw the dash for cash there was market illiquidity uh, and wide, uh, widespread dysfunction in markets. And um, regulators around the world uh, prioritized four areas uh, for regulatory reforms in the non-bank financial sector, including money market funds, open-ended funds, margin setting and CCPs, and core funding markets, such as the US Treasury market or the UK guild market. Some of those reforms have started, but they certainly have not completed. So more work to, needs to be done in order to fix uh, those vulnerabilities in the non-bank financial sector. Uh, the new uh, vulnerability that we have seen emerge uh, since uh, uh, the Ukraine war uh, are energy trading firms and is uh, margin setting and market liquidity in energy markets. And that's certainly something we're watching closely and uh, we will uh, 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 you know, monitor the situation to see whether any policy steps need to be taken there. Obviously, as we um, began this conversation, we were talking about the Federal Reserve's guidance to the market on tighter monetary conditions. Do you think that that message has been well understood by both equity and bond markets? And are these markets now appropriately priced, do you think, for what is unfolding? Well, there is certainly a risk of further sell-offs. Uh, the intended consequence of monetary tightening is to tighten financial conditions to slow down economic activity. And I would not be surprised if we were to see uh, a certain amount of readjustment of asset valuations uh, going forward. And that could be in equity markets uh, as well as in uh, corporate uh, bond markets and sovereign, uh, sovereign markets as well. Um, so, you know, monetary tightening means that financial conditions should be tighter. And uh, so certainly I would expect uh, further tightening of financial conditions uh, going forward. Just, just to wrap up here, I mean, it's quite a list of headwinds that um, the financial system face at the moment. Uh, COVID in China, surging energy prices, we've talked about the risk of Russian gas being cut off, uh, rate hikes, um, bursting yeah. asset bubbles, a whole slew of potential threats. Can you remember a time similar to this when the global economy and the financial architecture of the global economy faced such serious threats? Well, it reminds me a little bit of the sovereign debt crisis in Europe that followed uh, the great financial crisis of 2008. This was also a crisis on top of a crisis 
many uh, commentators and policymakers hope that the 2008 crisis was over, but they were just about to enter uh, this new uh, sovereign debt crisis. Today, uh, we had the pandemic. The pandemic caused tremendous stress in financial markets that was ultimately addressed through very aggressive policy steps by the central banks, by the finance ministries, and by the regulators. So that was a big success. But of course, it has left the financial system with certain vulnerabilities. And so on top of this pandemic and in this phase of pandemic recovery comes the war in Ukraine. And that has caused further stresses in some segments. So far, so good. The, the system has been able to absorb all of these shocks, but there are certainly uh, many risks uh, going forward. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.